today's news remain bear charged for financial crimes. The Royal Virgin Islands Police Force seeking information following attempted murder. No injuries reported after Huntum's gut shooting. Music Festival tooted as catalyst for BVI. And Kenesha Sprov launches Kimmy Gold's series. Of viewers, these and many more stories when 284 News return. He hit me. Will CG cover this? Don't worry. Remember when I was in that competitive arm wrestling circuit? Ah! Three time champion, baby. I did feel bad crushing all those arms and dreams. So I took them all out for ice cream. And then we got crushed. Ah! Anyway, CG handled my claims fast. That explains the arm. The best cover for the best value. CG Insurance. Good like that. Yo, everything good there? Bye. This thing got me one way, daddy. What you mean? Ever right, since I hook up with this thing, I can't eat, I can't sleep. This is the first thing I touch it when I reach home. What you mean? Hey, this thing like you, you know? Dad, this thing got me staying home, keeping out that trouble me. Wow. What's your name is? Shit. I talk about my city life. Don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Come to CCT today and sign up for CCT Live to access over 80 channels. CCT Live, bring it home. One month free trial, turn into five. Five months turn into well. You know I huff. I watch him ball. I been watching football. Dad, Nickelodeon, Paw Patrol. I am hook. Hook, I tell you. Welcome viewers to the Monday, March 25th, 2024 edition of 284 News. I am Kamal Haynes, bringing you the latest out of the British Virgin Islands. Now, leading today's news from the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force, a shooting incident on Friday, March 22nd, after 9 p.m., has left one male injured. The shooting took place in the vicinity of the multi-purpose sports complex in Rotong Tortola. In an official release by the police, they confirmed the shooting incident on Station Road in the vicinity of the multi-purpose sports complex, noting that one person was reported injured and rushed to the Dr. D. Orlando Smith Hospital. The police has since urged the public to come forward with any information pertaining to the incident, regardless of how seemingly insignificant, as every piece of information could be pivotal in advancing the ongoing investigation. Additionally, several reports of another alleged shooting incident was reported on Saturday. However, police, after dispatching officers to the reported area of Huntum's gut, revealed that no evidence relating to the reported incident was found. The police further said that at the time of their media update, no individual was found or reported, reported injured. On Saturday, the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force also revealed that they made significant strides in the ongoing efforts to combat financial crimes in the territory. They have announced that Romaine Beard, 34, of Pasia Estate, was charged with theft, obtaining property by deception, and possession of proceeds of criminal conduct. The force noted that the allegation stems from an investigation that lasted several months in 2023, where it is alleged that Beard unlawfully acquired and utilized someone's card for unauthorized transactions, totaling over $19,000 locally and internationally. Commissioner of Police Mark Collins, speaking on the breakthrough, said the force takes allegations of financial misconduct seriously and are committed to thoroughly investigating such matters. He said the dedicated officers have worked diligently over several months to uncover truth in this case and noted that the force will continue to collaborate with local and international authorities to ensure justice is served and the integrity of BVI's financial systems are upheld. Beard was granted bail in the sum of $40,000 to appear at the Magistrate's Court on April 24, 2024. For the British Virgin Islands is reviving its once popular music fest in an effort to expand its tourism product and draw more visitors to the territory, according to the Junior Minister for Culture and Tourism. Honorable Luce Hodge Smith said in a recent press conference that a return of the event is in line with efforts by the government to revive the BVI's presence in the market. The junior minister stressed that the BVI must be proactive about developing new attractions and experiences 
to remain competitive as the tourism market gets increasingly crowded with other islands aggressively marketing and upgrading their products. We have been hearing for a long time that the tourism market is becoming increasingly competitive and it became even more competitive after the COVID-19 pandemic. A lot of other countries and islands have stepped up their tourism product development and marketing. The BVI has a unique product that historically it has enjoyed high demand, but many of our competitors are actively marketing to the same visitors that we have been, been relying on for business. Excuse me. Some of those destinations can offer sun, sand, and sea experience. Some of them have beautiful beautiful waters for diving and sailing and picturesque reefs, but they also are available or able to offer additional attractions, whether it is ecotourism adventures or cultural experiences and so forth. So we have been saying this from day one. We in the BVI cannot sit back and pretend it is business as usual. We have to reassess our product and our offerings. We have to look at how we are packaging our offerings. How can we give it a new flavor or a new twist so that the returning visitor feels that his second or 20th visit is even better or more exciting than the last visit? We have to look at what new attractions we can add to complement those we already have. She said hosting successful festivals creates a wide range of economic opportunities through ticket sales, food and beverages, merchandise and more. It also encourages tourists to visit, leads to infrastructural improvements, boosts the destination's reputation and fosters community engagement. While the BVI's natural beauty has made it a popular destination, Hodge Smith said, and I quote, We cannot sit back and pretend it is business as usual. We have to reassess our product and our offerings, end quote. The return of Music Fest aims to enrich the territory's entertainment calendar, expose the BVI to new audiences, and provide a platform to promote local culture. The government is working to expand our tourism industry. We are working to revive the BVI's presence in the market as a venue or destination for meetings, conferences, events, and so forth. Music festival is one initiative in this regard. Music festivals and live performances have a significant impact on local economies and tourism. The benefits extend beyond the immediate revenue generated from ticket sales. The impacts on the local economy and community can go much deeper. Overall, these types of events serve as catalysts for economic growth, attracting tourists, stimulating local businesses, and enhancing the overall image and appeal of a destination. Economic benefits include creating an array of economic opportunities for local businesses. They generate revenue from ticket sales, food and beverage sales, merchandise sales and sponsorships. Music festivals attract visitors from far and wide. People may travel to a destination specifically to attend a music festival or similar activities. Hosting successful music festivals and similar activities, sorry, and similar activities help to enhance a destination's image and reputation. However, the junior minister emphasized that the entire community needs to embrace the tourism push for the initiative. My message today is that we have a lot to gain as a territory by coming together and working together to ensure that initiatives that stand to benefit the Virgin Islands do benefit the Virgin Islands. We cannot afford to lose opportunities or to squander opportunities either for lack of effort or because of personal or political differences. If anything can benefit the Virgin Islands, then as a people, we want the best for our country. We need to come together and try to make sure it succeeds as best as possible. Of the years this year's revamped Music Fest will feature international headline acts like Nigerian American singer Rotimi and R&B legend Freddie Jackson alongside local talents. 
Arch Smith tweeted with Timmy's massive social media following of over 4 million on Instagram alone as an example of the potential exposure for the British Virgin Islands. Well, up next, viewers, more local news. Uh, Angie, how can I get my claims paid quick? Rent's due next week. CG processes 99% of claims within five days. Remember when I was hang on with those goats? I caught a gust of wind and flew right into a movie car. Every appendage was in the cast, and they paid fast and fairly. That's what I get for trusting a man with a mustache and an eye patch. Now I gotta go. I'm meeting the guy who bedazzled my toes. 99% of claims are processed within five days. CG Insurance. Good like that. One. Uh, yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. My name is Kamal Haynes. Most of you know me from 284 News, but now you get to see me in a different light on my very own show called Health is Well. We have Joel Turbo. I don't want you to arch your back when you're pulling down. Milton McLean. First of all, right, your, your footwork. Steve Augustine. He did a pretty hard workout today, so perhaps... And as you can see, it's actually... <laughs> Alonzo Boynes. Taekwondo. Adam Morrows. I'll speak as if you're an absolute beginner. I uh, am an absolute beginner. You are an absolute beginner. And Seth Graham. It bites. It will Everything bite. <laughs> get your water, get your fruits and veggies, and experience a wealth of knowledge about getting healthy. Welcome back, viewers. In a thrilling encounter at the Bethlehem Soccer Complex in Christiansted, St. Croix, the British Virgin Islands senior men's team fought tooth and nail to secure a crucial 1-1 draw against their counterparts, the United States Virgin Islands, in the first leg of the FIFA World Cup qualifiers on Friday. The match remained deadlocked in a stalemate during the first half, with both teams struggling to break the deadlock. However, the tension escalated in the second half when the host USVI broke the silence with a right-footed strike from Jet Blaska in the 73rd minute, sending the home crowd into jubilation. Yet, the British Virgin Islands team refused to surrender, finding a lifeline in the dying moments of the game when BVI striker Hugo Lizziario seized a golden opportunity, finding the back of the net in the 98th minute of stoppage time, stunning a home crowd and securing a vital equaliser for for his team. Well, with that said, viewers, all attention will now turn to the AO Shirley Recreation Ground on Tortola, where the stage is set for the second leg of the FIFA World Cup qualifier between the British Virgin Islands and the United States Virgin Islands on Tuesday, March 26th. For the BVI team, it is a must-win situation with hopes of advancing to the next stage of the qualifiers hanging in the balance. However, thanks to Hugo Lizziario's dramatic late goal of U on USVI Seoul, the BVI team also knows that a 0-0 draw in the second leg would see them through to the next round, a lifeline that adds an extra layer of excitement and anticipation to what promises to be a thrilling encounter on home turf. 284 Media caught up with the team in their final preparation ahead of the big game at 3 p.m. BVI time. Well, it's all to play for come this Tuesday at the A.O. Shirley Recreation Ground in that pivotal match between the United States Virgin Islands and the home team, the British Virgin Islands. Well, I had the honours of speaking to some of the players and the coach ahead of that very important match. Okay, I have Hugo Lizziario here with me. Uh, he would have scored that very important equaliser last Friday. I want you to speak about that. Yes, it was my debut for the team. Uh, delighted to have contributed with the goal. I uh, got 20 minutes in and helped at an important time. So it's all for grabs on Tuesday and we'll be here for the win. And in terms of, you know, your, your debut goal, how did it feel scoring your debut goal? It was amazing. I didn't know how to celebrate. I mean, I thought about it before the game, uh, but being there in the moment was just too many thoughts coming in. And uh, yeah, I went to the celebration I like from Portuguese striker. So yeah. I have with me the coach of the BVI men's senior national football team, Chris uh, Kiwamia, welcome back to Tweet for Media. We do know we are on the heels of the 1 1 result um, recently on Friday in St. Croix. Um, the BVI would have had their, their, their extra time, stoppage time, uh, equalizer, yeah. basically, to give us a slight advantage at this home game come Tuesday. I want you to speak about that game. Yeah, it was a good game. You know, they. Uh 
they changed the formation to try and adapt to us. Um, and, uh, you know, once we got to grips with that, we got a lot more better in the game and we handled them a lot a lot better. They didn't have many shots on, on target and really the first shot on target they scored, which was disappointed. Uh, you know, listen, one thing about this team is they've got great spirit and they keep on going to the final minute or the 98th minute. And, you know, I think the free substitution that came on played a big part, important part in getting us back in the game and giving us a goal, you know, giving us a goal to take, uh, to bring back home. And I know the BVA audience would have had, had the privilege of being there to see what would have transpired, but I'm just going to just recap based off what I would have seen from the score result at, as it pertains to the stoppage time. It was nil all, all to play for in the second half, 73rd minute, I believe, goal from the USVI, uh, pressure on the BVI. Speak us through that particular moment after the BVI had conceded. Well, listen, it's very demoralising, really, when you, you they get their first shot on target and they score, really, you know. So we was disappointed from that point of view. And then it's just kind of trying to manage the game. You know, what you don't want to do is go two goals down and then having to score three goals at A.O. Shirley. So it was one of them, you know, we had a couple of substitutions who came off with like cramp situations, but we adapted pretty well. Then the thinking in the game was, listen, if we can't get an equaliser, let's not give them a second goal. But fortunately, you know, it starts off with uh, Jaden Abrahams winning with a great tackle at the bottom. And then Adrian Padella playing his part, Luka Chowell, uh, on to Justin Smith, and then on to Hugo to score, which is really important for us. Okay. And in terms of, I want you to put things into perspective. Um, come this Tuesday, you know, what would the result or the most likely result be? In, you know, obviously a win sends us through, but in terms of the 1 1 draw, what sort of advantage will we have come this Tuesday? I don't think it, it's, it's nil nil again. Mm -hmm. It's nil nil, but you know what it does give uh, both teams is you know we look we, we look at the personnel on their team and we see how they adapted and how they played, and now we've got to adapt our game to play a really really good, uh, intense game and and try to do well for themselves, the players, and, and for the whole of the BVI for the supporters that are coming down there, which is really important. I'm here with the captain of the BBI men's senior team, uh, Mr. Troy Caesar. Uh, welcome to the Twitter for me there once again, Troy. Uh, you're on the heels of the 1-1 draw um, in USVI St. Croix. All to play for on Tuesday. What can we expect? Uh, we're going to expect a good game. Uh, we, we're going to, the coaching staff came up with a, a game plan and we play them. So the coaching staff have a very good idea of what um, needs to be done, uh, what needs to be fixed, and we are out here trying to do so work on it, and then so we could um, execute that on Tuesday. And I want you to speak about those moments, um, especially stoppage time moments when the BVI would have found the equalising goal to at least bring that sigh of relief uh, into the final whistle. As I said before, we wasn't going there underestimating the team, uh, but we showed character and in the last window as well as in, in Tugs and Caicos. We was in that position before. So we started to get accustomed to show some type of character. Um, when we, we fell down a goal, um, we, I kept the team heads up and we said we, we couldn't score. Um, before, before even that, we had opportunities. We just didn't execute it enough. And we thank God that at the ending of the game, um, Hugo came in big for the team and scored that equalizing goal for us. Okay, and in terms of this, some words of encouragement for to for the BVI uh, public to allow them to come out and help support us come Tuesday. Yeah, um, everybody um can see from the past couple of games that we, since that we started back playing at home that the energy has been carrying us through the game and it has been a very good help. It's been a tremendous help to us and being that twelfth man giving us that energy coming on to the pitch. Uh, we we could come out there. I hope the community could come out there and give us that energy once more again on Tuesday so we could come out and have that 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 win. Well, the words you heard it from the coach and the players. The match is one that you do not want to miss. As they all said, come out and support the BVI team come this Tuesday at the AO Shirley Recreation Ground. Reporting for Twit4 News, I am Kamal Haynes. Well, up next viewers, some more local stories as well as a regional story. At Higher BVI, we're not just about business. We're about empowering lives, and that is because we aspire to inspire. By choosing us, you're supporting a company that believes in equal opportunities, diversity, and community growth. Our mission goes beyond profit. It's about providing HR solutions, fostering talent, and leaving a positive impact. Join us in building a better future, a better BVI. Choose Higher BVI. 
where your support isn't just a transaction, it's a transformation. Together, we're changing lives in these beautiful Virgin Islands. Start the year off with more. More speed, more downloading, more savings, and more FIA. CCT FIA Fiber Internet gives you the speed you need to keep the whole family connected. Packages starting at $119 with speeds from 300 megabytes per second. Super fast, unlimited downloads, even more reliable connectivity, plus free live streaming TV for the family to enjoy. Sign up for the absolute best fiber internet service in the BV. CCT FIA and pay no installation fee. Plus, get CCT Live TV for free. You deserve more. Get more with CCT Life Unlimited. Welcome back, viewers, and thank you so much for sticking with us. Local author Mrs. Kenesha A. Sprov officially launched her book series titled Kimmy Goes on Sunday, March 24 at the No Lloyd Positive Action Movement Park. At the launch, the event featured exciting family-friendly entertainment activities for children, including bouncy castles, face painting, and an Easter egg hunt. Premier Dr. The Honorable Natalia Wheatley congratulated um, Mrs. Sprov with some remarks. Uh, I just want to say it is my honor and my privilege to be here uh, for this book launch. I've known Kanisha for most of my life, and I know this is a very special moment for her and her family, and it's a family that I have a lot of uh, love and respect for. Jeanette, Ken, Kanisha, Jugo, and I know that they have big hearts, and they give to the community. And one of the ways that I know they've been given to the community since I have known them is their investment in young people. Their investment in young people. That goes back to the Wild Indians. That goes back to Anastasi. That goes to, you know, the after school programs um, that they do. Uh, that just goes to everything that they do for our culture, uh, for festival, all of that is an investment in young people. And Kenisha becoming an author is a really a natural progression of that investment in our young people. Because when you write books, you influence the minds of the young people and you ultimately help to shape the future when you become an author. And it is very powerful being an author because essentially you have a legacy that will live beyond you. It's a legacy that will live for many years. And my mother is someone who teaches young people to read. The books in the series include Kimmy Goes, Island Hopping and Kimmy Goes to the Beach. The scores of persons attended the launch, including uh, the Premier, uh, Honorable Kai Reimer also attended, as well as Honorable Luce Hodge Smith, Governor of the Virgin Islands, His Excellency Daniel Proust, and Deputy Governor of the Virgin Islands, Mr. David D. Archer Jr., along with Director of Culture, Dr. Catherine Smith. The Deputy Governor spoke about the importance of the day's occasion. As you can see, I'm ready to go to the beach and the island hopping. Congratulations, Kenesha, round of applause, please. That's not good enough. When you take your passion from your head onto paper, it's not an easy task, but you have done something amazing that will live for generations and generations and generations. You put your thoughts on paper. And to your family also that's here to support you, congratulations. I look forward to going to the beach and looking forward to hanging out with Kimmy myself. So if you see Kimmy, tell her I'll give her a ride on the boat also, but I, I look forward to being a part of this amazing series, not just for the first two, but many more to come. Congratulations, Kenesha. Mrs. Prov spoke of the importance of her readers feeling that they were accurately represented in her work. 
I'm gaining knowledge from Kimmy's experiences. I started writing in the evenings and my writing turned into something that would relax me. As I started envisioning what the children actually did at Motions and all the experiences we encountered on our field trips, the stories began to unfold. Motion goes to King Garden Bay, Motion goes to Anigata. The illustrations became easy as I had a lot of pictures and those that I didn't have, it was fun to get them. The book follows Kimmy, a little girl from the Virgin Islands who embarks on adventures children from the territory can't identify with. It also offers basic information about various places from a child's perspective with an imagination and exciting approaches. Director at the Department of Culture, Dr. Smith, expressed gratitude to Mrs. Sprov for her contribution to advancing liter literary arts in the Virgin Islands. The copies of the books are available at the Motion Studio of the Arts as well as online at Amazon, Walmart, and Barnes & Noble. To our final story viewers, Catherine, Princess of Wales, as reveals, she has been diagnosed with cancer and is undergoing preventative chemotherapy treatment, delivering a bombshell announcement from the British royal family on Friday. In a video statement, the 42-year-old princess, better known as Kate, described her diagnosis as a huge shock that came after she had abdominal surgery in January that was initially thought to be for a non-cancerous condition. The mother of Princess George and Louis and Princess Charlotte said she and her husband, Prince William, have been, and I quote, doing everything we can to process and manage this privately, end quote, until their young children were out of school for Easter break. But while not providing specifics on the type of or stage of her cancer, the princess vowed, and I quote, I am well and getting stronger every day by focusing on the things that will help me heal in my mind, body, and spirits, end quote. Well, she asked for time, space, and privacy as she completes treatment, but said, and I quote, I look forward to being back when I am able, end quote. The devastating news comes just months after Buckingham Palace announced that Kate's father-in-law, King Charles III, is also undergoing treatment for an unspecified cancer diagnosis. Premier Dr. The Honorable Natalia Wheatley has since issued well wishes to Kate following the announcement. Well, he said, and I quote, On behalf of the government of the Virgin Islands, myself, my family, I join with the global community in extending prayers and best wishes to Her Royal Highness Catherine, Princess of Wales, for a swift and full recovery in light of her recent health concerns, end quote. But the Premier also extended words of comfort to Prince William, George Charlotte, and Louis and the rest of the royal family as they continue to support Prince Kate during these challenging times. Of yours, that's it for today's News Roundup. Be sure to follow us for daily news at twit4media.com and like us on Facebook at twit4media and twit4bvi on Instagram and X. I'm Kamal Haynes and I'll see you again tomorrow. Have a safe and enjoyable evening. Bye-bye. Father Jesus, that learn you along like church souls. Hmm. Alright, do you enjoy the rest of the day? Next customer line, please. Wait, hold on a second. Yes, Sonny Bye, come, yes, Sonny. Good morning. Good morning, Sonny Bye. You must have cut fun tapping. It's okay, it's okay, I'll take care of you. What? No, no man, protect you. How may I assist you? Thank you. Yes, yes. <laughs> you want a top of power? Eh? You want a top of power? Eh? You want a top of power? Huh? Join the pre grade party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top Up Turn Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT Top Up is sold and top up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. You want top up power? Eh? Rashford made it. Manchester United. 
at home or on the go, watch CCT Live. Download our app and carry your favorite TV shows, news, or live sports anywhere you go. Visit cctbvi.com forward slash live. Select your package and tune in.